I've got a handful of matrices here. I have the matrix A that's an M by N matrix. You can see it has N columns and M rows. And actually, let me throw in one entry there. It might be useful. This is the, this is the Jth column. So the Mth row is going to look like this, A, M, J. That's that entry right there. And then I have matrix B defined similarly. But instead of being an M by N matrix, B is an N by M matrix. And so this entry right here, let me just, and I, might, I realize this might be useful. This is going to be my nth row, and it's going to be my jth column. And then I also wrote out their transposes. So if you look at the transpose of B, B was an n by m matrix. Now the transpose is going to be an m by n matrix. And each of its rows become its columns. And the same thing I did for A. Its transpose is right there. A was m by n. The transpose is n by m. And each of these rows become each of these columns. Now, fair enough. Let's define two new matrices right now. Let's define the matrix C. Let's define the matrix C. Let me do it over here. Where? Let me do it over here. I, I think the real estate will be valuable in this video. Let's define my matrix C as being equal to the product of A and B. So what's, what are going to be the dimensions of C? Well, M by N matrix times an N by M matrix, these two have to be equal even for the matrix matrix product to be defined. And it's going to result with an M by M matrix. So it's going to be an M by M matrix. Now let's define another matrix. Let's call it D. D. And it's equal to B transpose, B transpose times A transpose. And the dimensions are going to be the same, because this is an m by n times an n by m. So these are the same, so which is a requirement for this product to be defined. And so the dimensions of b are going to be m by m, m by m. So let's explore a little bit what the different entries of c are going to look like. So let me write my matrix c right here. So it's just going to have a bunch of entries, C11, C22, C12, all the way to C1M. You can imagine it's an M by M matrix. You're going to have CMM over here. You know, how the, you know how this drill goes. But what I'm curious about is how do we figure out what C, the general CIJ is? How do we figure out what a particular entry is? We know that C is the products of A and B. So to get to a particular entry in C, and we've seen this before. So it's a particular entry in C. So C, I, J. It's going to be, you can view it as the dot product of the ith row in A, the ith row in A, with the jth column in B, with the jth column in B, just like that. And what's that going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to AI1, AI1 times B1J, B1J, plus AI2, AI2 times B2J, B2J. And you're just going to keep going until you get to the last term here, AIN, AIN, times the last term here, BNJ, BNJ. Fair enough. Now. What about our matrix D? What are its entries going to look like? So D, similarly, it's going to look like, you know, you're going to have D11, D12, sorry, D12, all the way to D1M. You're going to have DMM. I could keep putting entries here. But I'm curious about just the, some general entry here. Let's say I want to find D, D sub J, I. D sub J I. That's what I want to find. So I want to find a general way for any particular entry of D. The jth row and ith column, which is a little bit different than the convention we normally use for these letters, but it's fine. The first one is D's row. The second one is D's is this entry's column. So how do we figure that out? So D sub J I. It's going to be equal to D is the product of these two guys. So to get the jth row and ith column entry here, we essentially take the dot product of the jth row here. So we're going to take the dot product of the jth row here, which is that right there, with the ith column of A. 
with the ith column of a, which is that right there. So I'm going to take the dot product of that. And you might already see something interesting here. This thing right here is equivalent to that thing right there. And this thing right here is equivalent to that thing right there, because we took the transposes. But let's actually just write it out. So what is this dot product going to be equal to? Well, it's going to be b i j. Well, let me write it this way. It's going to be b i j times a i 1. Or we could write it as a i 1 times b 1 j. And it's going to be plus b 2 j times a i 2, which is the same thing as a i 2 times b 2 j. a i 2 times b 2 j. And you're going to keep going until you get b n j times a i n. Or you could write that as a i n times b n j. b n j. Now notice something. These two things are equivalent. They're completely equivalent statement. The d sub j i is equivalent to c sub i j. Let me write that. So d, or I could write c sub i j is equivalent to d sub j i. Or another way you could say it is anything that's at row, all the entries that's at row i column j in c is now in row j column i in d. And this is true for all the entries. True for all entries. I state as general as possible. So what does this mean? This is the definition of a transpose. So we now get that c, c transpose is equal to d. Or you could say that c is equal to d transpose. Now this is pretty interesting, because how did we define these two? We said that our matrix c is equal to our matrix c, matri the matrix product a and b. And we said that D is equal to our matrix product B transpose times A transpose. I did those, those definitions right there. Here are the definitions. Now, we just found out that D is equal to the transpose of C. So we could write that C transpose, which is the same thing as A times B transpose, is equal to D. So it is equal to D, which is just B transpose, A transpose. And this is a pretty neat takeaway. This is a pretty neat takeaway here. If I take the product of two matrices and then transpose it, it's equivalent to switching the order and, or transposing them and then taking the product of the reversed order, B transpose, A transpose, which is a pretty, pretty neat takeaway. And you can ex actually extend this to an arbitrary number of matrices that you're taking the product of. If you're taking, I'm not proving it here, but it's actually a, a very simple extension from this right now. If you take the matrices, let's say A, let me do a different, different letters, X, Y, Z, take their product and then transpose it, it's equal to Z transpose, Y transpose, X transpose. I haven't proven this general case, and you could keep doing it with four or five or n matrices multiplied by each other, but it, it generally works. And you could uh, essentially prove it using what we proved in this video right here, that you take the product of two matrices, take their transpose, it's equal to the product of their transposes in reverse 